gon' give it to ya what? Wait for you to get it on your own X gon' deliver to ya Knock, knock, open up the door, it's real With the non-stop pop out from stainless steel I'll Go hard getting busy with it But I got such a good heart that I make the mother uh, Wonder if you get it Damn right, can I do it again? What's going on YouTube? Food Supermoto here On a fucking cold Windy ass day in Philadelphia. So we're on a we're on a bike here, and uh, we're gonna take a trip down to Philadelphia, and we're gonna talk about I guess riding gear, and in particular like winter weather riding gear, such as leathers. So before I started uh, making the decision to ride today, I actually left my bike outside overnight uh, to see how it would do in a cold start. For those of you who don't have a garage and you have to cover your bike up in like apartments and shit. And um, overnight it was like, you know, down below freezing. But um, this morning it was at like 40 degrees and I kick started it with a, ch ch with a full choke. Fired right up in the second kick. So, um, how about them apples? Uh, right now I'm wearing full leathers. Uh, I forget who makes them. Um, these are actually like my dad's from when we lived in Germany. So, these leathers, believe it or not, are from like, um, no earlier than 1984. So that just goes to show you how, how much of an investment fucking riding, a good set of riding leathers are. And now I've been wearing them on and off, you know, for the last um, eight years or so. So there you go, like 30 years, man. And these probably cost them a thousand bucks back then. And they're still good. Granted, they're not as good as, you know, leathers are nowadays with, um, all sorts of like body armor in there. Obviously, pe with people who have some common sense and riding ex experience, leather is like the granddaddy of them all. Um, it's going to provide you the most um, abrasion protection. Um, as far as like fitment, it's going to be a little tight at first, but as soon as you break them in, man, dude, they feel like like a glove. Uh, depending on what what type of riding gear you're getting. This here is actually a two-piece le leather suit, and it's uh, touring leathers. So you're not going to have all the protection, like, you know, as if you were on a racing set of leathers. Like, for instance, you don't have shoulder armor, you don't have knee sliders, shit like that that's meant for the track. You're not going to have that, so these are going to be a little more comfortable. Let's talk about, should you or should you not wear leathers in the United States? Now, that's the big question here for everyone who's thinking about buying leathers, all right? Do you need them, and where do you live, all right? So, a few basic things you have to ask yourself. Where do you live, all right? I live in Pennsylvania, so I wear leathers only really to get to uh, point A to point B if I was like commuting like I used to, or if I'm doing a YouTube video. Other than that, if I have to wear leathers, if it's not like a big ride, like a rally or something, I'm probably just not gonna ride, because it's too cold. But anyway, you have to ask yourself that. Then you have to ask yourself, um, do you want perforated leathers or non-perforated leathers? You know, uh, these aren't perforated. I, I don't think if I was to buy a new set of leathers, I don't think I'd buy perforated because in Pennsylvania it gets so fucking hot and muggy in the summertime that you're not gonna even wear like half the time I don't even wear a long sleeve or like a jacket. I just wear a fucking it's like a spine protector and short sleeves because it's just so fucking hot. That's in Pennsylvania, I do. So if you're like Texas or in the South, you're gonna have to really ask yourself if leathers is even an option for you. Because I mean, it might not be. Two, uh, the price. Leathers are expensive. They are. Um, you know, whether you get a two-piece leather suit or a full leather suit, I personally recommend a two-piece because uh, if you're traveling and stuff, you need to take a shit or something. You can just take your jacket off and slide your pants off. You don't have to take your whole suit off. So think about that. Yeah, so the price. The price, where do you live, and how often are you actually gonna wear the leathers? But like I said, I don't really wear leathers unless it's like, this is the threshold. It's gotta be like 40 degrees or below with um, with a lot of um, with a lot of wind and a lot of drive to fucking wanna ride. Because honestly, dude, if you're cold, you're not gonna enjoy the ride. People are probably gonna be looking at me all fucking stupid though, be like, look at that fucking weirdo. But whatever. Um, another thing too, uh, with the leathers, other, now that we got past old cost, where do you live? How often are you actually gonna wear them? Here's a big thing. 
leathers. I, at least when I first started riding, and I was riding my 600 like all crazy, um, it gave me a like a huge boost in confidence, knowing that like you know I, I'm riding, I haven't been riding for more than like six months. Um, but when you have a piece of like cowhide around your ass, dude, I'm telling you, man, you um, you you really feel uh, more confident that if God forbid if you do go down, you have a really nice set of leathers that's going to protect your ass. At least in the United States, um, a lot of people like to rock these blue jeans. And um, for those of you who have gone down, and believe me, if you haven't, just wait. You will. If you're really pushing yourself in your motorcycling skills, you will. But um, when you go down in fucking blue jeans, dude, about two seconds later, they're fucking gone. <laughs> like, they don't do nothing for you. They really don't. Um, I went down going like 35, and they were like, choo, like bare ass, dude. Nothing left. Anyway, uh, yeah. So the confidence level, like, oh my god, dude. Like, if you go like already like wheeling just today. Mind you, I don't have a spine protector, which I really fucking like. And if you guys haven't invested in one of them, do it, man. It's like, I can't believe I was riding for so many years without one. Um, it, it adds that sense of protection saying, you know, you're not as afraid to go down. You, you know, you, you have a little bit more confidence, you know, leaning into that corner or uh, pulling up that front end. Um, and so think about it like that. If you're a new rider and you live in an environment like this, Hey, think about it, man. It might actually be a really good investment. And for all the for all those who um, have ridden in the cold, or just like even like a little chilly, dude, the first thing they're gonna tell you, dude, your fucking hands get cold first. First and foremost, your fucking hands will will get cold because they're out here. There's nothing protecting them. And if you don't have fucking um, heated grips, at the least, dude, your hands are gonna get numb so fucking fast. They will. And then you have a problem with dexterity with everything. And on the motorcycle, all your hands are pretty fucking important. But um. Here I got my heated grips, I just cranked them up on high. I got these bark busters, and believe it or not, these do a lot to keep that wind chill, again, the wind chill off your fingers. Uh, well, I was gonna take you down uh, this part of Philadelphia called Maniunk. It's actually a pretty dope place. But, um, oh, that's fucking why. Dude, what the fuck is going on? Man, this is gonna upset me all sorts of ways. Hey. This, I'm sorry people, this is a beat ass way to get through uh, Maniunk, but we're having some sort of um, festival and shit there, so I should actually probably be there right now instead of riding my bike, but duty calls, man. Nothing's better than riding in the cold or inclement weather and being comfortable. But, um, yeah. I'll tell you what, as soon as we get to like Kelly Drive, it's an awesome fucking motorcycle. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? How the fuck am I supposed to, how the fuck am I supposed to get, I'll ask the cop. No. How am I supposed to get over there? <laughs> hey, is there another way to get to Kelly Drive? Oh, get out. Oh, damn, all right. Can I just go around here and turn back that way? Yeah. Thank you. Uh. Well, he was nice enough. Well, dang, man. That totally ruins everything I was going to do today. But I guess fucking Philly Marathon's on. The running fucking thing that is, so. Too bad. And there's some other roads I guess I could show you. That's more fun. Oh yeah. Makes you feel more comfortable, more um, you know, safe. Um, there's a lot of it, like you know, good things, positives coming from leathers. I mean, really, before modern textiles and shit, like I would even say like 
the turn of the century. Leathers were the go-to, you know? I mean, in, and in racing, yeah, they still are. But those fucking leather suits, oh my god, you're talking like thousands of dollars. But you can probably get yourself a good set of like basic, um, let's run this. Good basic set of leathers, you know, probably on the $800, $1,200 mark, you know? And make sure you don't really, like with everything online now and shit, dude, you can get anything online. But I would definitely recommend fucking going to a shop and like a legit shop, not like a, like a, oh, we sell motorcycle parts and bikes, but we don't know shit about motorcycles. Don't go to one of those shops. Go to like a mom and pop shop. Probably you're going to get the best service. You might pay a little more, but you're supporting small business and you pay for what you get at the end of the day. But, um, dude, get properly fitted. Fucking, dude, and the leather's going to last you fucking like a decade or two. As long as you don't crash on them, dude. So, think about that. I'd, I'd rather take comfort and practicality above all. Um, like, for me, like, I like to do wheelies, and hopefully, like, you know, as I'm progressing, I'll do some more, like, fun, reckless shit. So, like, I really value, like, spine protectors, knee pad, elbow pad, shoulder pad, shit like that. So, that's, like, what, what I, what I would invest my money in. But comfort and practic practicality above all. Like, to be honest, I was just doing this just to show you guys, like, how it can be done, but I'm actually having a, quite a... Quite a good time. Um, quite a good time on my bike today. Not really cold at all. It's just a. It's like you know it's cold out, but you're not really that cold. It's, but um, dude, if I was side protector on, I'd probably have like no fucks given. I mean, it's gonna hurt when you loop it, but I mean, it's not gonna be that bad, you know. It's all doable. This is kind of like a shortcut. Most people don't mind. Some people get really like butt hurt, like when you're on the fucking road here. Dude, this would be fucking tits. I was just like, wham! I fucking pulled it up by these guys cutting trees and shit. They probably think that'd be pretty cool. Fuck, I think that's pretty cool. But we won't be too much of a too much of a, a nuisance. I'll just get the fuck off. That's the bike trail. But well, I hope you guys are enjoying my videos, even though, like, today was kind of a failure as far as, like, cool scenery and stuff. But, there, like I said, there'll be another there'll be another day and another conversation to have. Kind of rambled today, touched on somewhat of what I wanted to touch on. I had a pretty good time, and I hope you did, too. And I hope you like, subscribe, and share. Not just to my channel. That'd be cool, though. But uh, my buddy uh, Kyle, everyone's pal, really good dude. Uh, there's the shit, and uh, honestly, he makes it a lot better video than I do. So, check his channel out, man. You won't regret it. So, until next time.